hello and welcome to my channel so this in this video we will look into data streaming um, 100k records so here is our simple architecture so basically we have let's say 100k records in our postgres db now we want to do some computation so in our use case let's assume we have e-commerce data so we have all the orders data so like customer uh, one ordered uh, this item one um, in category let's say clothes and the cost is like hundred dollars so like that we have 100k records now as a data analytics uh, person i would like to know what is the cumulative cost in each category right so what i will do is um, I will use a Kafka, like a Python script. Um, it will read the data sequentially from this database um, one by one, and then it will produce the stream onto a topic called orders. And we will have a Flink consumer, which will listen to this topic orders. It will consume it and then it would do some computation in our case it's going to be the cumulative uh, summation by category so that's what our flink job is going to do so in short uh, we would have a postgres db with some existing data we would stream that data using our kafka producer and the kafka producer will uh, apply this to a topic and then we would have a flink consumer it will consume from this topic and it will just print to the console. Now, once this compute, once Flink job does the computation, we can do a lot of stuff. We can have a sync uh, to a database um, like a Snowflake or it. we can even write it back to the Postgres. Now, because we have already computed it, um, then we can attach some uh, visualization tools to see the insights into hey for this month um, what has been uh, my cumulative category cost and whatnot now this is a very simple use case where we are just doing cumulative of um, by category we can even do a sql query run it on the postgres directly obviously for 100k records uh, it would take some time so it's better that we would pre-compute and then store it so it would be faster Right, so this is the overview. Now this Python is to point out that in order to create the 100K records, um, I am basically uh, using a Python script and this Python script will um, put push all the data, create all the data uh, into the Postgres. Now um, here is a breakdown of all the services that I'll run in Docker containers. Um, so Kafka and Zookeeper, uh, so Kafka is like a Kafka cluster because I would be um, creating topics, um, creating producer and consumer. So I would need a Kafka cluster and Zookeeper is basically used for metadata management. Now, these two Docker images I'll directly pull from the cloud. So I'm not going to code, do anything in terms of coding. The coding part will be these four services. One is the Python data generator service where I will be uh, generating 100k data, storing them into Postgres. Um, then I would have a Kafka producer in Python, written in Python, which would basically keep on running. It will fetch uh, rows one by one from Postgres and then stream it onto a topic. And then I would have a Flink consumer. It's going to be a Java service and I'm using Maven. So Maven is nothing but a framework um to basically create a service right it provides us with all the um what you say abilities it has got a pom.xml file where you can define all the dependencies so in my case my dependency would be um connecting to the kafka let's say connecting to the postgres um and there are many other things right so uh, we'll look into this in detail one by one so i first i would be doing uh, building the postgres then I would be I would be building the Python data generator service, then Kafka producer and Flink consumer, right? These are the services that we will run in Docker. Um, now, many of the people asked me that I can should give a brief introduction on Docker. So Docker is nothing but uh, it's also another framework that helps you to create small containers. So 
right now what happens is let's say everyone is on a laptop um now our operating system is mac so this is our uh, infrastructure internal uh, like ram uh, hard drive and all those uh, infra um, level services um then we have operating system um, which is going to be mac in this case now we run a docker docker uh, uh, you can say like a framework a service what docker does is it will create small apps now each of this app will use some bit of um uh, some part of uh, our uh, internal infrastructure for example let's say i have 16 gb ram so in order to run this lightweight processes let's say i have four processes right in this case so each one would take let's say 1 gb ram so i would be consuming 4 gb ram out of 16 gb will be will be taken out by docker docker will like lock those 4 gb and give 1 1 gb to its service now it depends on the configuration but docker just provides us a way to run uh, a separate service on top of our laptop uh, infrastructure now in in this case i am using laptop but on the cloud it could be an ec2 instance um and then ec2 instance you can spin up a very large ec2 instance which could have been 64 gb or something so that um it could take more traffic and it could take more load right so uh, we'll we'll continue to go in depth but yeah internally this is going to be it um so let's jump on to the coding part um uh, here is my uh, so i will just create a directory called uh, uh, stream data right and then i will just go inside it now um uh, firstly i would need what i would need would be a docker.compose file because docker.compose file gives us a way to um to basically um what do you say to basically list out all the services that we want to spin inside docker so doc we can just use this yml file as a configuration file it's just a configuration file and docker is very much smart to read this file and go line by line and see okay uh, what services do we need uh, and then what uh, each of the configuration like port or any environment variables that we need to pass to that container right so i will quickly do docker compose dot yml um okay so i would have this one now i would start doing the coding part um uh, version 3.9 let me see if i can you know uh i know um my font size could be small so let me increase this okay um networks because uh we would need uh all the services to talk to each other bridge um and then driver um now i'm not going in depth about how to write a docker file um i can come uh, cover it in a separate video but right now um it's it should be pretty much easy to understand so for example here is the services tag now anything under it with a tab uh, docker what docker will do whatever is mentioned under services it will create a container for it like zookeeper will have its own container and uh, it would need a uh, image so we will use the confluent inc uh, cp uh, zoo keeper latest image and then we have environment and then we would have environment variables which could be this is all configuration part uh, we are still not yet uh, on to our logical part um uh, networks bridge so this is one service um similarly we would have a kafka service uh and then 
Kafka image so kafka will depend on zookeeper which means that it will wait for zookeeper to come up and then it would do uh, i'll just do one thing i'll just copy uh, uh, each and every part for it i already have it in my uh, raw file i'll quickly go over it so i have services which is zookeeper uh, i have a kafka service Kafka cluster. So these services will pull images from the cloud. So I am not going to code them uh, this create topic. Actually, we can remove this. Uh, when I was testing this out, I was having an issue that topic is not created, but I think that is because, um, I was trying to consume from a topic before it was created. Um, anyways, so this is the service that I'll be writing, which is going to be our Python service. So this Kafka producer is this one, this part. Uh, and then I will create an image locally. That's why it, it's able to uh, point it to that image. Then I would have a Flink processor, uh, which is going to be our consumer, right? And then I would have generate data. Generate data is going to be this Python file. So this is going to be our generate data. Then our Postgres, the so Postgres DB will be, uh, I'll create a folder um, and the reason I'm running it in a Docker container so that they can talk to each other through this bridge driver that I have. If you see the networks is bridge, so it's able to talk to each other and uh, volumes. I've just created this uh, by default. Uh, volumes will be created for uh, Postgres. Um, I don't think these need volumes, but it will still get created. Um, okay, so this is the Docker compose file. Um, now, first, what we'll do is we would need to um, create our table first, right? So let's do that. So I'll create mkdir post. Let me zoom this so that it's visible. It's I think it's too much. Okay mkdir postgres so we'll create a postgres folder now inside this we'll have two four files one is docker file and then one is uh, create a table dot sql file so what it will do is um, create sql is not, nothing but it's gonna create the table as soon as this comes up so create the uh, orders table. This is going to be the table that we will read from create table orders. Customer ID. Actually, customer ID could be a primary ID uh, category. Worker item name worker two fifty five. Okay, so this will create a data. Actually, let me create an ID also. Okay, so this will be our uh, data. Uh, table orders table now we want it to be created as soon as uh, the container comes up so this is going to be very straightforward um, we will pull a latest image from the docker hub postgres latest and then we will copy create table dot sql slash docker entry point init db dot t okay so what this will do is uh it will copy this uh, sql file that we have onto this folder inside our docker container and whenever it's a postgres container 
anything inside uh, copied under this will init will basically run during the initialization and as you can see from the name it's docker entry point in ntp right so this will get created so after we run this our table will be created so that's good now let's come to the next service which is going to be our python data generator because the table is up um this is uh, done um let me mark it with green okay so now we need to create our python service so i will create generate oh sorry we need to create the folder first okay so inside generate data uh, it's going to be three files again docker file insert data.py and also requirements because it's a python file so we would need these three things i will close this i will open insert data and for insert data i have the code with me so i'll just copy paste and i'll quickly go over it what i'm doing here so what i'm doing here is uh, i'm using uh, the what do you say i'm using a uh, sql alchemy as my uh, library and this is the database url so database url what it takes is this is going to be our username uh, password tab uh, db and the table name so he, where where do i get this information from right so i get this information from here uh, when i am creating the postgres container i am passing this environment variable so it creates a postgres database with all this configuration and then i can just hard code it and use it obviously it's not secure to pass it like this but just for our demo purposes i am doing it um now what i do here is i i just sleep for 5 minutes this is just a precautionary thing where where i am just waiting to make sure that the table gets created before i insert anything into it right um these are all the configurations to connect to the ta uh, table uh, to the db um this is just a class that i created for the order name and then what i do here is uh, i create a for loop from 1 to 100k and i am randomly adding some customer id category and some cost and the item name right um yeah so i'm just uh, doing this um our because our use cases we need uh to gather a uh, cumulative sum based on category so uh by target is category and cost i don't care that much about these two fields um but yeah uh, you can obviously create multiple tables uh, and do a lot more than what i am doing here okay so i am just doing with the category and cost and i am just initializing this to anything so right now my category if you see it's going to be random int between 1 and 10 so i will only have 10 categories uh, and based on those 10 categories we'll see um how what is the cumulative sum right then i create a session and i'm adding this order to it and then what i'm doing here is i'm committing so what this does is it will insert into my table this line uh, transaction and then i'm just pulling out uh first five rows just in case you know this will get printed in the logs and we'll see that in the logs that it gets printed so that we know um okay uh something is printed right so this is for the insert data now for the requirements dot txt um uh, i'll just copy paste this also uh, these are the four things so this one gets uh installed uh, automatically with sql alchemy but these two are the important library for database connection with postgres from python and now coming to the docker file um i will just copy paste this and i'll explain it what i'm doing here uh so what i'm doing here is um i'm actually pulling this python 3.8 a slim uh, image i'm copying the requirements.txt and then i am running the installation because Uh, the container is created now i need to install the dependency first uh, that is required by my python service right and then i uh, copy resources um 
this is basically I'm creating a work directory. This is going to be my slash. I add this file uh, that add this Python file to my slash pathway in the container, like how in my laptop, this is the path, right? So imagine Docker container being itself a Mac laptop, a small container. So it will also have these paths, right? So I'm just, uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking this insert data.py file and putting it there in the path. And then I am running this command, which is going to be Python. This, this is the way to run a Python file. Okay. So I think this part is also done. Um, now what I can do is, um, in my case, Postgres, I'm directly pulling the Docker file from the Postgres, uh, uh, what do you say folder, but for generate data, I would need to create the image. So the way I create the image is Docker build dash t generate uh, data dot so what it will do if everything goes fine it will uh, create a docker container for me uh, okay and then the way to see is docker images so if i see this image uh, we can see this generate data name is here and this is the name i'll be using here so it knows to pull it from here and we can use a Docker app to see. So Docker app is showing me, Hey, this is a generate data, uh, image. Okay. So now moving on to, let me, oh, where is my Google? This one. Yeah. So this part is also done. This service is done. Um, let me mark this as complete. So uh, one more thing, uh, now I'll go to the Kafka producer. One more thing, creating image doesn't mean uh, the container is running yet. To run the container, I will have to run a command called docker compose up, which will basically uh, parse this docker compose and then it will bring up the services. Right now, if you see here, containers doesn't have anything. Okay, so now, Let's go to our uh, folder called uh, Kafka producer. So I will create, I'll go back. I'll create MKDIR Python or which Kafka producer. I like to keep that name, which I'm using for my uh, image name. This is my image name. So now inside Kafka producer, I would have four files. One is Docker file. Obviously we need Docker, one is touch uh, python producer.py touch.txt and one is touch wait for it.sh Okay, so I'll quickly go over each and every one. Now what wait for it sh is doing is uh, this is in I have covered this in my previous video also. Uh, what this file does is uh, this is a big shell script that I have written. Uh, what this file will do is um, you see how Kafka producer is dependent on zookeeper and Kafka, right? Now, even though you gave here depends on there is a high chance that Kafka comes up, but but Kafka's other configurations, which is like listeners topic creation and all are not yet up. The service itself is up and Docker Compose is not that smart uh, to see that, hey, my Kafka cluster is up successfully, fully uh, up. Now I can run this service. So in order to make sure that Kafka and everything is up, I have this wait for it script written and it's a universal script. Like if, if, if you are you working with Kafka, this will work. It's going to be generic. It takes care of host port, everything. So this file is uh, basically gonna uh, make sure that uh, everything comes up before running this uh, Python script, right? So I and I'll be using this uh, during my uh, consumer part also. Now going to the requirements uh, file. Uh, let me see uh, what are my requirements. Yeah. So for the requirements, these are the requirements that I'll be uh, using. Um, 
uh, yeah many of them are like kafka so these and these are the same because we need to and these this also so these three uh, are basically part of the first generate data service as well uh, these are to connect with postgres fetch the data right so that's why i need these dependencies and kafka python and aoa i a i o kafka is used uh, for connecting with kafka cluster right because once i have read data from postgres i would need to create a topic and then i would need to push produce this message to a topic right this message as a row to topic so for that this is required okay so requirements dot that is done now i will go to my python producer and i will quickly copy paste this and i'll explain it to you guys so here i have just included dependencies this is my database URL. it's going to be same as the one in the generate data right this is going to be my kafka no kafka always runs on 9092 and my topic i am creating a topic of water right now everything here is same as generate data um, what i am going to do is uh, i am going to query all like i am going to read uh, actually this uh, this comment is wrong um, so i am going to read all the data one by one and then once i have read all the data i am going to um, push it down the the lane right which is going to be my um, uh, producer topic uh, order topic now let me print this uh, what i can do is it's better print would be order dot um, customer id category or actually i can yeah i order dot item name okay yeah this should be good so i am going to print each and every order also which i am producing to the kafka just to so that from the logs we can make out whether everything is working fine or not right now coming to the docker file uh, my docker file will look something like this um, i'll explain to it it's same as generate data i am pulling the python 3.8 image um, I'm copying the requirements.txt file, then I'm uh, running the pip install. Uh, let me do pip3. Uh, and then I am obviously, I need to copy few files. Now, work directory slash, but in the previous service, I was just copying Python producer. In this case, I will be copying wait for it SH and naming it the same. Um, here, I'm adding the Python file, and this is my command. What it does is, it tells wait for it to wait for zookeeper to come up then wait for kafka server to come up and then run my python uh, service right so this is what this docker file is doing and similar to the previous one i am going to build the image docker build dash t uh, kafka producer so this if everything works fine like this is going to build it so if there is no error in the code everything works fine and then we would have another image. If you can see, we have an image of Kafka producer and this is what we'll be using here, right? So our another service is kind of done. Um, obviously, if there are any issues, we'll debug that later, but for now it's done. Now, only one service is left, which is my Flink consumer. So let's get down with that. Uh, This is let me okay now it's visible okay so now let me create a directory called uh, it should be fling processor let me copy this one here okay so now here I would be creating folders and few more files so one is docker file oops sorry touch docker file touch pom.xml the pom.xml will have uh, all the dependencies as i said uh, currently flink is more uh, compatible with scala and uh, python 
that's why uh, sorry uh, scala in java that's why i'm using maven um and then i would need to create mkdir source and then inside source i will create main and then inside main i would create main dot java actually inside main i would have one more folder which would be mkdir java mkdir resources and then inside java i would have three files which is going to be touch order dot java and then touch okay and now going to the resources part i will need now this file is important uh, for maven um, so that uh, when we okay so this is how the structure will look like for fling processor we have wait for it sh we have pom.xml we have docker file and inside main we have java and three files and then resources and this so let me first copy paste this file this is just for logging purposes so that uh, in our case we are going to print uh, all the consumed data onto our uh, container logs right and we can view the container logs actually there are multiple ways one is from command line but because i'm using docker app it's better to use this for my uh for the visualization of logs um now this is done let's uh, wrap up with the uh, um, wait for it sh because it's straightforward as last service um now pom.xml is going to be a pretty big file and I'll just copy this. Uh, what I'm actually this is doing is, as I said, is all these all are properties. So the properties would be what Flink version to use inside the uh, container, what Kafka version to use, what Maven version to use, what Log Four J version to use. Right now, dependencies are like obviously Flink is dependencies required. Uh, apart from that, Postgres dependency. Now Postgres right now in our case oh, is not that much required because we are not pushing the uh, transform data onto Postgres. In my previous video, I was doing this. So that's why I ha still have this dependency. Um, the Jackson faster XML, these dependencies are used for um, parsing the, the, the data that we get from orders topic. Um, then we have log4j for logging purposes, right? We have Kafka for um, connecting with kafka uh, and jupiter is i think is for unit testing and we are not writing any unit test but it's let let it be it's fine um yeah apart from that then it knows which file to run so if if my file name was different let's say my file name was order.java so i would have order here right now this uh tag tells uh maven service to call the main.java and this will and main logic will stay here right uh, and we'll see it in a bit so now we'll uh, I'll, I'll add docker file data later uh, let's first go with uh, our deserialization data so what this file is going to do is um, this file is very straightforward what it's going to do is um, it's going to uh, read from our stream and then map it to our order class now actually i need to write the order class first so our order class will look something like this okay so what our order is right now doing is uh, we have two fields category and cost so the order will get this data um, and then it will um, set this data for this instance so it so think about it um, let me open this file so here my data is produced from Kafka, right? Now each row will be read as one uh, message in my stream. 
so let's say i uh, i have 10 rows so kafka producer will create 10 streams right like 10 uh, packets and then my consumer will consume those 10 packets so each packet will create a new instance of order and then this that order instance value will get set to category and cost um, right and then uh, and then this deserialization schema what it does is it this is doing the mapping basically reading the stream and then setting the order instance for that stream uh, right so the reason we are doing this because it becomes easier to compute and use this in my main.java file and we'll see it in a bit in action so that will be clear so now let's say um, i will do this that i will import all the dependencies here first now um, i will create my public class main now the reason i'm not copy pasting this because this is going to be a, a major uh, uh, concept so let's code this out quickly uh, so our brokers will be Kafka uh, 9092 and we have seen this in our uh, in our Kafka producer also if I open this this is our broker so broker will be same for both right like this is the Kafka cluster it's just that uh, one service is producing to it and the way it produces is using this Kafka producer and then send is pushing it to the topic and in this case we'll be consuming and we'll see that uh now if i am adding a uh, thread dot sleep for 60 seconds uh service sleeps for first 60 seconds reason I am doing this so that we can see that in action um, how the data is getting created for 60 seconds it will keep on creating but after 60 seconds we'll start consuming it and then we'll do the computation on it um, stream execution environment env is equal to get execution environment Okay, so now we'll create Kafka source order. just copy this bunch of uh, configurations these are the configurations to set that hey uh, read from our kafka broker when brokers is being this one uh, right and then um, uh, properties set like read uh, every uh, every uh, one second and then set topic which is read from the order topic because we are generating to order topic and then once the reading is done, deserialize it using the order deserialization schema, right? Uh, which is our uh, uh, the file that we saw, which basically creates an order instance uh, for each and every one. Okay, after this, uh, we have data stream source, uh, which is going to be order Kafka uh, environment from so just read from this source and watermark so watermark strategy uh, is something that let's say um, no watermarks for now uh, yeah so watermark strategy we, we don't need it um, this is something so watermark strategy is required when let's say uh, right now i am reading them based on uh, the time when the packet arrives in my kafka stream right 
um let's say i was using using the timestamp when it was created in the database um in the postgres database so if i was using that time there is a chance that packets could arrive won't arrive in that interval let's say i'm using a 5 second window to calculate to compute or do some transformation if they don't arrive in that 5 second window uh, what uh, uh, fling does is it just drops it and doesn't care about it but to solve it we can have a watermark strategy of let's say keep a watermark time of 1 minute so there is a chance that in that extra 1 minute if the packet arrives can consume it and then use fit it into its right interval so right now we don't we are not setting anything um yeah data stream now here comes our data stream um so we know that our order contains four fields but we are only concerned about category and the uh, cost so this is what will get created now what this is doing is that aggregate my stream based on uh, my category so the event will have my category field because we are using this order class so order class has a field called category um and then uh, we are using a window size of now this is going to be tumbling size processing time windows of time dot seconds um 300 so this is basically 300 seconds is like 5 minutes so i am basically aggregating based on the 5 minute window um because i want to show you how it does generally we are we are concerned in our use case it's like give me on a daily basis that on a daily basis how, what is the cumulative of a categories right so in that case this will con convert into 24 into um uh, 60 into 60 but in our case just for demo purposes i'll be aggregating based on 5 minute window so every 5 minute we'll see what categories are um, what is the cumulative sum of each category so aggregate aggregator okay and then what we'll do here is uh, we'll just print it some aggregator stream print and then we'll have environment dot execute ex ut kafka fling postgres okay so i guess this looks good now uh, we are using aggregator as this like we will define a function called cost aggregator uh, which will have our concept uh, so let's look into this and this is going to be the main logic cost aggregator implements aggregate function an aggregate function basically takes uh, order which is of the type tuple string double and then it gives out string double so these are the three parameters that will be taking uh, will be taking order uh, will be taking our tuple which is of string which is like the previously calculated uh um sum of categories and then this is the new part and then we will sum them so override public so these are functions which are part of aggregate function and aggregate functions are like a uh, part of our flink api um so we can just override them based on however logic we need so return new so first time we get we'll just return a tuple of uh, 0, 0 but later we will compute it
Now here, what we are doing is um, adding. So whatever new event comes in, and this is the previously calculated information in that window. So what I'm doing is just to new, create a new tuple. Uh, and then the, what will be the new tuple will be event dot category, obviously, uh, as is same and accumulator dot F1 plus event dot cost. Now F1, now what happens is accumulator is taking two fields, right? String is our category double is our cost so it signifies f0 if i use f0 here means that i'm trying to get the uh, category uh, and if i am using f1 it's double so here even instead of event category i can even write accumulator dot f0 uh, it would be same because uh, here we have sorry here we have the logic set by kafka key by event so that will work uh, in either case either cases Now here comes the interesting part merge. So what merge does is uh, because um, we are using uh, Flink, Flink is a very fast and distributed network, right? It could have, let's say four or five nodes. So one node, uh, one node, let's say node one, let's say, let me type it out. So node uh, zero gets these value category one comma cat category uh so tuple is like this category one and the total cost is 10 for now and then i have cat uh, and then i have um category three and then total cost 30. now node um one will have uh, let's say category 2 comma 20 and then category 3 comma 2. so let's say 12. so what happens is uh you can see that the category through two, three has been calculated on node one also as well as node zero. So after the five second window, it needs to merge them, right? So that final result will be category one, 10, category three, 42 and category two, 20. So that's what this merge is gonna do. Um, this merge is gonna use uh, two fields, tuple two string double V and then here we will return new tuple a dot f0 plus a sorry a dot f0 is going to be our string which is going to be same a dot f1 plus b dot f1 oops yeah okay so i think this function is makes sense now the way it will work is we would because we are inside our service we would reach to the pom file let's see if we are on the pom file level okay now we need to run maven clean package um, that will uh, give us a good idea about um, why uh, like maven should work um, i don't know why it's not uh, okay so let me do this Okay, I don't know why it didn't work. Okay, now it should work. Maybe it wasn't able to find out. So we got an error and we got an error saying uh, tuple uh, line 54, line 54, it should be tuple two because we are sending two tuples. Uh, so let's see if, if this thing works fine, in that case, what we can do is we'll go ahead and create our uh, okay so it worked so uh, let me see if we have all the images so we would need to create an image for this also right Be, uh, doc uh, let me clear this docker build dash t flink processor so 
because our build was successful it should uh, oh docker file is empty okay my bad i haven't added docker file logic yet and let that's the issue so the docker file is going to be same um, what it will do is um, um, it will uh, obviously in this case it will download a image which will have java and jdk installed and then it will run all the bash commands to install dependencies it will copy the wait for it sh file now you remember we ran maven clean package command so what it does is it creates this jar file so this jar file is basically an executable file so what it does is all of this logic is basically compressed and placed inside this jar file now this jar file you can think of it as an executable file um so once i run try to run this uh, it will run the logic which is present inside it so here i am doing that only that wait for zookeeper wait for kafka server and then run my flink processor jar which is like this is the command to run my jar file using java um so this is what it should do let me run my image this will create an image if everything goes good okay so we see our image is being created now right so now what i'll do is uh, i'll quickly open a new tab here i'll go to the parent level which is my docker uh, compose level and then here if everything goes good docker compose hub dash d i'll run this command so what it will do is it will start pulling the images from the cloud which is kafka and zookeeper and for all other images i have already built those images right so that should it should fetch those images locally and then create those containers so if everything goes good um okay so we have our stream okay so everything is running it seems uh okay So, uh, so my generate data, it created data. Okay, it's fine. Kafka producer it says permission denied. Okay, so I need to fix that part. Kafka producer, and then in case of Flink processor, also permission denied. Okay. So I think it's something to do with the permissions. Um, I'm not sure why I'm getting that. Um, I think, let me check the permission for my wait for it file. Okay, so let me change it to ch mode 777. Okay, so I have changed my permission for this one and let me change it for Kafka producer. I'm not sure why it's giving me this issue. Um, and then Okay. So now, okay, so now let me actually the best part is I will remove all of these. I'll remove all the images and the volumes also. Okay, so now I what I'll do is I'll go to each docker build dash t Kafka producer. Let's open another terminal with generate data because I need to. So images are created for both. Um, let me create it for uh, my Flink processor also. 
just in case let me run this again um, the jar file again so okay now what i'll do here is uh, i'll do docker build dash t fling processor so this should create the image okay now i can go here again and do docker compose up and we'll get to see once this is complete we should see all of our um, services coming up um, okay so the generate data will basically fall down after creating this makes sense then kafka producer uh, is waiting on something yeah it's waiting and then it will start creating our messages so once it starts creating uh, you can see it started creating the stream right it's live so we can see it's being created now the flink processor um, we have a sleep time of one minute and actually I made a mistake of adding five minutes to it. So five minutes will have to wait. I should have added it for one minute, like 60 seconds. So that way after one minute, we could have seen the aggregation, but you can see the Kafka producer will keep on producing the images. Um, it's only 53 seconds pass through. Um, yeah, so let's wait for a bit um, till the time um, otherwise we won't be it's just one minute past okay and which is taking a no process is taking a lot of CPU which is good so our stream has started so this will go on for 100k rows right um, you can see that it's like real time streaming kind of real time streaming so this is one use case where you have a lot of data in a db and you want to do some you know analytics processing uh, on it or maybe you want to uh, do some back testing or anything so we can just start reading it it might take like based on data size it will depend how much time it will take generally these jobs run for can run for a whole day or maybe 18 hours or something so once we it's just two minutes have passed so we'll still need to wait for three more minutes but i think um, we can see this in action yeah generate data the reason generate data is not uh, running continuously that's because i don't have a while loop it just tries what it does is it creates quickly generate pushes all the data and just prints one row and then it closes like the service is down that's the reason it's down and it makes sense like um we don't want it to keep running for any more time the purpose of insert data is uh to add the data right um so gender data is done kafka producer will keep on producing it's same like it doesn't have a infinite while loop so it will keep on generating data once all the 100k rows are generated then our kafka will go down um in production uh, this doesn't make sense our kafka producer should always be up and it should always what it do should do it should keep record of the last row that it, that it has read and then when any new row comes it should read that again and produce the message again. Now that is called as the change data capture uh, uh, feature where if any data has changed or anything uh, new comes in, uh, we pass it, on, pass it on to the next uh, um, service, which is going to be our Flink service. Now the Flink, obviously in Flink, we have aggregated based on five minute window. So in five minutes, uh, it will give out what all cat what is the sum based on the categories but obviously we don't want five minutes statistics right we might need 24 hour statistics so in this case you just replace it with that and flink will take care of it um i think 
we are soon gonna hit five minute window. So let's open this. Oh yeah, it's here. So you can see right now it got category 10 and this is the total cost. Category four, this is the total cost. So we can see by each category, we do see their cost basis. So it's working, it's good. So, and I think we can mark uh, this also as done. Cool. I think that's all for the video. And thanks to one of my subscriber who suggested me this use case. Um, I'm looking for more real use cases. So if you have any ideas to uh, comment in the uh, down below uh, of this video, and I'll be adding all the description in the video as well. And if you guys like my video, please subscribe to my channel. It does give me motivation to create more of these videos. Uh, and thanks a lot guys for all the support. See you soon.